Ainara, and I love digging into a good book. So let's read, learn, and grow together, one diverse character at a time. Welcome to Ainara's Bookshelf. Welcome to my book loft. I really want to read a book about a strong friend group today. Maybe in a magical fantasy world? This one, of course! This is Witchlings by Clarabel A. Ortega. It's a fantastic fantasy book about three young girls in a world full of witches. This book is about 12-year-old Seven Salazar, who is about to be sorted into one of five witch covens. House of Stars, House Hyacinth, Frog House, Moth House, or Goose House. The house that Seven has been dreaming about forever is House Hyacinth. But on the night of the ceremony, Seven's worst nightmare comes true. She's not sorted into any of the five covens, and she becomes what is known as a spare. Spares are known as leftover witches, with little magic abilities. Not only that, but the other two spares are her childhood bully, Valley, and a new girl named Thorn. Seven doesn't want to be a witchling forever, so she invokes the impossible task. And their task is to defeat the dreaded Night Beast. If they want to become a true coven and gain their full powers, they have to complete the task before time runs out. If they don't, they might live the rest of their lives as toads, like actual toads. I absolutely loved this book. From the adventure and action to the world building and lovable characters, it was fantastic. First, we gotta talk about the world building. I enjoyed everything about this new magical world, like the covens. I did the Witchlings Coven quiz online and I got House Hyacinth, valiant, virtuous, and powerful in all things. The house color also happens to be purple, which is my favorite color. Then there's all the magic, of course. All spells in this world are in Spanish. I loved that. There's a great diversity of the magic itself as well in this book. Spells, potions, and then we have the magic plants, objects, animals, and monsters. There's so much to uncover in the magical world that Ravenskill is in, and I really want to learn more about it. A theme in this book that really stood out to me was believing in yourself and your abilities. Seven, Thorn, and Valley are sorted as spares, which everyone knows means that they aren't as powerful as the other witches. But instead of accepting that and continuing their lives without magic, all three of them work incredibly hard and use all of their individual skills to try to defeat this beast because they all believe in their power. I think this is so important and it's a great message to not let yourself or anyone else underestimate you because you have more power than you know and you can do anything with enough courage and confidence. Valley, Thorn, and Seven are awesome. I feel like they're all so different, but then there's just something that makes their friendship feel right. I don't know, maybe it's because opposites attract, but each of their personalities and feelings are so strong. And the author does a great job of showing that. Overall, this magical story about friendship was incredible, and I'd recommend it for ages nine and up. The author, Clarabelle Ortega, really delivered again. She's an incredible writer, and her Dominican heritage influences her writing a lot. Her debut novel, Ghost Squad, is one of my favorites. And it's so amazing, in fact, that it's being made into a movie. Witchlings is a new favorite of mine, and I can't wait to read Witchlings 2, The Golden Frog Games. Actually, Clarabelle Ortega lives in Peekskill, New York, which inspired the town of Ravenskill in Witchlings. Do you want to go to the real life Ravenskill with me? Oh, Clarabelle, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, thank you for having me. Well, I'm so excited for today. I'm so excited too. Well, I mean, here we are in Peekskill, New York, which inspired Ravenskill in Witchlings. Can you show me around? Yeah, absolutely, let's go. Oh, what's this up here? That is the bruised apple, which inspired Thorne's family's bookshop. Oh my gosh, it's so cute, and I love the name. Yeah, it's like already perfectly witchy. I couldn't think of a better witchy name, so it's the only business in the book that's name wasn't changed. Well, that's perfect because it's so cute. I know, I love it. <laughs> so, I mean, 
let's take this opportunity to talk about your experience with books. I mean, of course, you're an amazing writer. Thank you. But what was your relationship with books before that, like when you were a middle grade reader yourself? I loved books. I was obsessed with reading. I actually used to get in trouble for reading too much. Like <laughs> during recess, they'd be like, why don't you do sports? And I'd be like hiding, trying to read a Goosebumps book. Um, so I've always loved to read. I've always loved spooky stories, especially. Yeah. Um, and I just really never thought I could be an author until I got older. But yeah, I've been a lifelong reader. So this is like a dream for me, really, to be able to write every day. And that's my job. Wow, that's awesome. So, shall we continue the tour? Yeah, let's go. Wow, so this is the gazebo, the magic safe spot in yeah. Witchlings. Yeah, this is part of Twilight Square in the book, and this is where the Witchlings go after being attacked by a Guko because it's supposed to be a safe space in the town. So. Can you tell us a bit about what happens here in this gazebo in Witchlings? So the Witchlings run here to sort of escape this Guko who is attacking them. And there was a lot of media that scared me uh, when I was little that said like quicksand was going to be a really big part of my life. So I wanted to have a quicksand sort of moment. So the bottom of the gazebo starts melting and they get stuck in it. Um, and I just really love that scene. It's so exciting. And I love all of the magical elements of this book. And in this scene specifically, we get to see like lots of magic spells and objects and monsters. There are a lot of things that went into creating the Witchlings world. I like to call it Shrekian fantasy because it's like our world uh, in that, you know, they have cell phones, they have the internet or the witchernet, how it, <laughs> <laughs> it, as it's described in the book. Um, but there's also magic spells and the spells come from, you know, sometimes necessity, like what did I need to happen in that scene? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it just came from things that I enjoyed that made me laugh and that I thought would be whimsical and fun. And of course, all the spells are also in Spanish. Spanish is my first language, and I really wanted it to sort of feel like an inside joke between me and kids who maybe English isn't their first language. Because yeah. uh, when I was growing up reading, if I saw a Spanish word in a book, I just felt really connected to it. And um, yeah, I just wanted people to have like that warm, fuzzy feeling and for the Spanish in the book to be magical. I mean, how special is that? Even though Spanish isn't my first language, it was nice seeing the extra bit of Latina spice in there. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. So where to next? Do you want to go to the train station? <gasps> yes. All right, let's go. <laughs> Wow, the Peekskill train station is so cute. Yeah, one of my favorite scenes where the witchlings are looking for magical mushrooms called shushrooms <laughs> takes place right here. I mean, the only reason they are here is because they're doing their impossible task, right? That's what the shushrooms are for. Um, and they're doing the impossible task because they're spears, witchlings that don't fit into any of the other five covens. Yeah. And in that is themes of, you know, not fitting in and being unwanted. Why did you decide to add those themes to this book? Well, as a diaspora kid, I often felt like I didn't really know where my home was, and I thought Witchlings would be an interesting book to explore those themes and of sort of not fitting in and finding your place, even if it's with friends. I think at one point or another, everyone feels like they don't fit in. For sure, I totally agree. All right, I think we have one more stop. Yeah, let's go, let's do it. And finally, here we are at the coffee shop. Yes, so this is the Peekskill Coffee House, but it's actually called the Ravenskill Mud Bean Juice House in the book <laughs> because mud bean juice is what coffee is called in the world of the 12 towns. This is like a hangout spot for our three mm. favorite witchlings, Seven Thorn and Valley. What did you want your readers to take away from all the relationships in this book? Well, I wanted to talk about not just friendships, but friendship breakups and new friendships, because I feel like that was a huge part of my life when I was in middle school. So there's also the character Poppy, who is Seven's very best friend at the beginning of the book, but they have sort of a falling out. So I wanted to talk about what it feels like to lose a friend and what happens when you have to make new friends when you're 12. I had so much friendship drama when I was 12. So, me too. I mean, that was only last year for me, but still, it can be a lot when yeah, you're for me too. Grade. I was 12 last year. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, thank you so much for coming to talk to me. I love that this friendship that we've gained over the years. Yeah, thank you for coming to Ravenskill. It's been a really fun day. Can we go get a coffee or a hot cocoa? Yeah, let's do it. Come on. <laughs> Clarabelle is living proof that you can be inspired by almost anything in your surroundings. But it's not always that simple for everyone. It's something you need to practice. 
So if you're the sort of person that likes to write and create fantastic worlds, but your brain is stuck for ideas, giving yourself a writing prompt is a great way to get it unstuck. Here, I'll give you a simple one right now as an example. You find yourself in the presence of a witch. Are they good or bad? Are you their prisoner or their apprentice? Describe in detail as you walk around and explore the room and all the magical objects you find. Maybe try to guess what those magical objects might do. Okay, that's like 100% guaranteed to lead to 100 plot ideas for your next story. I can't wait to read what you come up with. See you next time on Inara's Bookshelf.